Well, welcome to our fifth and final episode on creating an archaeology game with arcade.maycode.com. In our previous uh, episodes, we've covered the basics of getting our game set up. The first thing I want to do today, though, is add a few sound effects. So as we find our fossils and as we hit our uh, gas pipelines, which are dangerous to us and cause us to lose a life, I want to be able to add just a small little sound effect. So what I'm looking for is our music category. And we've got a few different sounds that we can play, and we can even choose our own little melody if we needed to. So I'm gonna drag across my play sound, and I'm looking for different areas that have significance in our game. So down the bottom here, I can see that my block says, on sprite of kind player overlaps with another sprite of an artifact. Well, this is where we've found, or where we've hit, our gas pipeline and we're taking a life away from ourselves. So this is a bad situation. So we definitely want to be able to alert the player that, um, that we've hit something and something significant has happened. So we've got a bunch of different, um, different melodies or different sounds here. So I might choose my power down sound. And if I look up here, I've got two other um, situations where I've overla I'm overlapping with some other sprites. So I've got this, the situation where I've found a fossil. So I'm going to drag a block in for this one. And maybe this is my um, ba-ding sound. So this is the, the, the sound that, that indicates you've done the right thing. And we've got another one here for our food. So this is where we disintegrate the dirt. In this case, I'm going to conserve the user's ears or the player's ears and I'm not going to put a sound for every block that we destroy there. I figure that's probably going to be just a, a little bit too much for a player to sort of handle. Okay, so let's test that out. So as I play my game, I'm going to come through and I can hear straight away there's a couple of sounds, so listen, listen for our bone. Excellent. Sounds good. Hear it again. And I'm looking for a gas pipeline now. There we go. We heard that pipeline make a different type of sound, a power down sound. Uh, they're all hidden here. Oh, there he is. Excellent. All right, so good. The next thing I'm going to show you might be a little bit, a little bit tricky. What, we're, what, what I'm trying to do is if I look at my tile map, we've got this big clear area where our player has to um, basically dig through the dirt. What I want to do is I want to add random blocks or some blocks in here that will not disintegrate. So these are going to be dirt blocks that just are impossible to dig through. But I want them to look exactly the same as the other blocks, the other dirt blocks, so that my player doesn't know to avoid them until he's tried to get through them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify my, my tile set just, just here. And I'm going to put maybe a barrier in the middle here. So I'm just going to draw some, some black blocks uh, actually, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw using these these little um, plant blocks. I want them to be different to my black blocks at the top here. So what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to place some dirt sprites. Uh, they're going to sit over the top of those. So if I go OK, I play it at the moment. What you'll see is when we play our game, those blocks are not going to have dirt tiles over the top of them, and I'm not going to be able to move over the and I can move over the top of them. So Partly, partly of the way there. Okay. So in a previous episode, we did something very similar. What we did that time is we created an array of all of the blank locations on the screen, and we stored that in the variable blank tiles. So if we do the same thing again, but rather than looking for just the blank tiles, what we're going to look for is our little tree tiles. We should then be able to um, use that to place some dirt tiles over the top. So let's grab a new variable and we'll drag this up and we're going to put it under our blank tiles just so that they're together. Very similar um, grouping here. I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this maybe my walls. And I know that that's under our scene block, our scene category I should say. And I want the array of all blank locations. go. I'm going to set this up and just my blocks down here have changed on me which is no good. I want to create a new variable for them. I'm just going to call them 
Not sure why it's changed that, but we'll call that gas pipe again, just so that it's consistent. We'll set this back to a gas pipe. Everything should be good again. So interesting little observation, just a little quirk of the tool just there. Okay, so I've got my walls and they're set up now. All right, so at the moment though, we've gone through and we've set our little dirt tiles to sit on top of all of the blank tiles. But we also want those blank tiles to be a little bit different, don't we? So, because we don't want to be able to destroy them. If I was to extend my blank tiles to all of the locations of this, of these other blank locations or these, these walls here, what would happen is because we're setting them as a type of food, we, and we destroy the food when we touch it. We don't want that to happen here. So we need to have another loop, again, that runs at the, at the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is grab my four element value of list. My new list now is going to be called walls. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna duplicate. So I've clicked, right clicked on the top of this block and hit duplicate. And what that's done is it's given me a complete copy of that sprite. And I'm gonna call this, uh, rename the variable this time. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm gonna call it hard wall. So this is a wall that's not gonna break. And then I'm gonna duplicate this block as well because I want it to be in the same location as my values up here. I want it to be my hard wall variable and everything else should be in place there. So I don't have to drag everything around again. I don't want this to be a, to a type of food because I don't want it to be able to be destroyed. So all I'm gonna do is set that up to be maybe an enemy at this point, or you know what, I'll give it a new kind and I'm gonna call this a, a wall kind. So we've got walls as a type as well. So let's test that out. Now, oops, already hit a gas, oh, two gas pipelines straight up the top. And, oops, what happened? I must have hit another gas pipeline down there. Let's try again and see what's going on here. All right, yes. So I can see here, oops, here is my wall section, but you can see my player's still able to move th directly through it. <clears throat> so we need to set this up a little bit differently in our, in our tile map. So what I wanna be able to do, if I come back to my tile map again, I've set those blocks up what I want to do is draw some walls. So what I'm going to do is select this little section over here. It looks like a wall. Now what's going to happen is when I click on it, and I'm going to click on each of these tiles, I'm effectively drawing a hard wall there. So if I hit done, and I test that again, now when my player comes on down, whoops, you can see here I can't move through it, and I can't actually tell that they are any different to the blocks that I've currently got. So. I can't move through it. So you can imagine that I could really make my level a whole lot more difficult if I've got these blocks and they look the same as my other blocks. So that's quite challenging now. Although I just won, um, I guess I'm getting good at this game. So with that change now, what you're capable of doing is going through and you're creating quite a complicated little level. So I can add all of these um, little trees. Now they're gonna get replaced by dirt sprites but then I'm gonna draw the walls over the top of them and that's gonna prevent my sprite from moving through them. And we know that none of, the, none of the fossils or any of the gas pipes are gonna get placed in any of these locations where it's impossible to be able to get to. Because remember, we're only gonna place those items down in random locations where our transparent sprites are. So we're pretty safe in, in the way that we've handled that. So it's just making this a little bit a little bit more random for our player. So if they've played our game once, they're gonna know that this is what our tile map looks like. What I wanna do is add a little bit of variation so that they're not quite sure which tile map they get. We won't have to change any of our other code, just the code for our tile map here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my tile map and I'm gonna hit duplicate. And I'm gonna drag that in, in just here for a second I'm gonna do it maybe two times because we're gonna have three different variations maybe, okay? All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna randomize which of these tile maps gets used. So I kinda of wanna come up with a little statement that says, well, if we're 50% of the time, 
we get one, maybe 25% of the time we get another one, and maybe if none of those come up, so that other 25% of the time we get the third one. So re recall just over here when we did our overlapping, we kind of had to build up a bit of a, an if statement or a logic statement. Well, I want to do the same thing again for our tile maps. So I'm going to come into logic, and I'm looking for this block here that says, if something is true, then do something else, something else, and there's a little plus button that gives us more options. So I'm going to drag that just under our little splash screen. And I'm going to expand it out so that we've got three different scenarios. And a little bit tricky, I need to kind of break my blocks apart, but I'm going to drag each of these into a different section. And I'm going to put my code back again. So I have to come up with three different, different cases or logic statements that are going to allow each of these to, to work randomly. So we know that we've got a random, a random number um, over here, and that can help us out, I think. So let's see what we can do. We, can, we want to be able to compare uh, a random number to some other value to work out whether we want to hit these two values here or not. So let's have a look and come into logic. And I'm going to use this. This at the moment is our less than symbol, but I'm going to drag that guy in. I'm going to drag another one just while we're there. Okay. All right, so if we come back to math, to math and I pick a random number between 0 and 10, and if I say if that random number is less than 5, I know that there's a 50% chance of this one being hit. Okay. And again, so if I do the same thing again into this guy here, and I say, if this one, so if we are less than five, we're gonna do this, so there's a 50% chance. If not, so that means it's five to 10, then we're gonna come into here. If we do the same check again, again, so if this random number is less than between zero and five, we do this tile map. If that doesn't work, then we'll, we'll um, fall back to the third tile map type. So if I change these around a little bit, what I can do is come back to my tiles. I can change it up so that I've got a few dirt blocks around the place. This is a pretty tricky level. Now, don't forget to draw your walls. I'll do that. That one's okay. And then my third one down the bottom here, I'm actually gonna get rid of all of those. So if I wanna get rid of the walls, I have to click on the wall button and then I can get rid of that and I'll come back to my tiles. Need to make sure that I use the same sprite. And draw my, I'll actually draw a few more. And draw my walls on. So I need to overlap those walls. And so now I've got three different levels that are randomly picked. So let's see which one I'm gonna get can't quite do it, there's a block up there, so I can't quite tell what that is at the moment, but it's already proving itself to be quite challenging. Yes, this is that, that big one. This is my third one down here. You can kind of see just here, and there should be a block there that goes away, yeah. So that's this one here. So if I reset it again, we'll see if I get a different one. Yep, I've got a different one again. So I've got three different random levels there. So you can feel free to add, add more as you go along. But that uh, there just makes our game just a little bit harder again, and a little bit more challenging, and a little bit more interesting for our players. So one of the final things I wanted to be able to show you guys is that I mentioned in our first episode that you can actually take these games and you can put them onto real hardware. So if, you've, if you're lucky enough to own some of the arcade.maintcode.com hardware, you can put your game on it. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what this game looks like on some real hardware. So here we are, I've just got a little prototype board um, and it's got my dig to play and I can go on through and I can play my game. And if I can, oh, I hit a gas pipeline. You might've been able to hear that. And I'm looking for it. One of the things you might notice, it is a little bit slower on some real hardware here. There we go, found some. So it's a little bit slower because what we find is that there's lots of sprites on the on the screen, which are our dirt sprites, and we're trying to get rid of them. And it still works okay, but 
it is worth thinking and it's an interesting consideration. It is an interesting observation. When we go to play this game on our computers, it runs really, really smoothly. But what we find is that it does have the potential to run just a little bit slower on some real hardware. So that's why if you're a, really ga a real game developer, you want to be testing your game as you go. Because you, you don't want to find out after you've shipped your game or after you've sold your game that it runs a little bit slower on some particular type of hardware. But in any case, I hope you've ha enjoyed this series. Um, it's been fun making it, and hopefully you'll enjoy Archaeology Week as, as much as we have. Um, and yeah, try and create some games, try and extend it a little bit further if you can, um, and I'd love to see your creations. So be sure to share your, uh, your work using the share button um, on arcade.makecode.com. Until next time, keep on coding.